Just a quick reminder that if you want to support Concepts and Legends, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also show your support by using our TCG affiliate link for any and all of your magic needs by using the link you see here or below in the description. Any and all help is greatly appreciated and helps us bring you more videos like the one that is starting right now. Hello everyone! Today's guest, illustrator Jake Murray, is one of the fast rising stars in the world of Magic the Gathering. And speaking of stars, Jake is also a contributing illustrator for something known as Star Wars. Cameraman tells me it's pretty popular. Now, I've never heard of it, but I love dancing with the stars. So enjoy this interview with Jake as I bone up on some much needed reality TV goodness. So um, I would like to thank you for taking the time to, uh, to talk to me today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and because it's, I, I, I tried to do the best research I could, but there is not much about you that I can get to. So I wanted to start off right away with asking you, is it true that you were once a court, um, a sketch artist for the courts? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did some courtroom sketching for, um, it was maybe like a year or two. Uh, it wasn't like a full-time gig or anything like that, but the, uh, the local news station here in town in, in Columbus um, somehow got my name from the local art school that I had went to or had gone to. And, um, they were like, Hey, can you, can you sketch portraits really quickly? Okay. I, I guess so. And, and yeah, so I would just take on, um, these courtroom gigs every now and then. And what was the craziest one that you got? Do you think, I know you can talk about that cause it's a matter of public record, right? Yeah. I mean, I didn't do any like super high profile cases or anything like that. Uh, but there was one that I did that um, the gal who was being tried, um, she was claiming to be like the heiress to the, the Samsung dynasty or something like that, and mm. uh, had gotten caught trafficking in uh, just a bunch of cocaine, I think, <laughs> in, a, in like a private jet here. And uh, so they nabbed her here, and, and yeah, so I, I was sketching her during that trial, but... Um, uh, yeah, did she... I, 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 somehow I doubt she was the heiress to the Samsung uh, fortune. I, I, I'd imagine they don't need to deal uh, drugs. <laughs> I, I mean, that would be my guess, but that's... Right, uh, that, yeah, that's they, definitely, they definitely denied it, so I, yeah. I don't think she was. But. So where is it that you, got, that you studied? Now, I, you are a realist, um, a, a, a realist um, a illustrator, that is what you've referred to yourself as, which I find really interesting um, because I feel like it might be harder to be what, what you do might be harder than to be just a, you know, a traditional artist because you have to copy faces so well. So did you study for that? And, and, and where did that come from? Um, so I, I went to the Columbus College of Art and Design um, here in Columbus, Ohio, but uh, I mean, as far as realism goes and training to to paint faces, I mean, there's a certain amount of of general training that you get, you know, in portraiture and things like that at art school. And of course, you can take more electives and things. But um, I mean, as far as that goes, that was just my personal preference, really. Uh, it was just what I liked to do, and it's it's the kind of thing that I practice in my sketchbooks because I just enjoy drawing faces and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that the more you do it, the more you kind of find your, your style and, and your comfort zone. And, and that's kind of just what you end up doing, I guess. See, I feel like that there is an element of, um, that there is an element that has to be sort of like innate in you. I mean, how early did you discover that you could draw the faces the way that you do and, and, and really capture like a, a, a perfect representation of somebody who's alive? Uh... I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I would say I'm still uh, working on it. Like, I, you know, there, anything that I do, I, you know, your own, your own worst critic. So I don't feel like I've necessarily perfected it or anything like that. But I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I, but you know, right. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. Thanks. Um, you know, I, it's hard to say if there was like a particular age or, or like a turning point where I was like, oh yeah, I can, I could do this now. But um I mean, I remember even as a, a young kid, like I'll look back at some of my just drawing pads and, and notebooks from like when I was nine or something. And there'll be just like a, uh, 
a pretty crude drawing of you know me just trying to copy like the video cover from Batman Forever or something like that, and just like a really crude Jim Carrey uh, Riddler or something like that. So um, pretty early, I mean, it would seem. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I was always kind of trying to accurately represent what I was seeing, I guess. Um, in addition to like uh, having an interest in cartooning and and all that kind of stuff too, but um, that that was always kind of what I was drawn to was just. Um, trying my best to represent what I saw, you know, the way that I saw things. Now, this is a little known fact about you that people aren't going to realize, but you are unknown uh, for being a fan of Star Wars and uh, that you are involved with Star Wars uh, a little bit. Uh, I mean, if I, you know, just just a little bit. Um, just here and there. A little, yeah, yeah. So how, when, when did you officially start uh, becoming involved with with uh, Lucas uh, films and all that uh, good stuff? Uh, yeah, officially, I think it was probably like 2011, 2012. And how did that happen? Um, how did that come about? So it, it all started when, um, Fantasy Flight Games, uh, who I had been working with for maybe, maybe a year up to that point, um, on some of their work, but they had just gotten the license, uh, to do Star Wars games, you know, tabletop card games, things like that. Um, and so it kind of, I just really lucked out and it kind of just fell on my lap. They were like, Hey, we, we're going to start building these products. And are you interested in doing that? And as a, a big star Wars fan, you know, all my life, I said, let me think about it. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it just, it went from there. And, um, yeah. How long did you have to think about it? <laughs> like about a, about a half a second or yeah, uh, about yeah about half a second yeah you're like i need to okay yeah sure <laughs> but like, yeah it's like yeah actually no I, i'd rather not get involved with the most famous uh franchises of all time i <laughs> i think i think i'd much rather stick to uh not star wars um no uh i and i heard in an interview that you gave that you said you had a hard time uh doing mark hamill's face uh, when he like as like a young luke and yeah um, why was that? I mean, is it because he has a like a sort of like a unique bone structure or something, or how does that work? Um, well, so a lot of the time, if I'm doing um, a likeness or something like, uh, especially from like those movies, which are so well known, and and there's so much artwork that's been created for them over the decades, uh, that it's like you see a lot of the same uh faces being referenced you know like there's that you when you look at a, a drawing of, of luke skywalker you know it's probably the 30th time you've seen that particular face drawn and so what i like to do generally is uh take a lot of different references and movie screenshots and everything and try to create something that is you know still looks like them but isn't necessarily exactly something that you would be able to pick out and be like oh it's from that scene or oh it's you know, from I, that yeah. magazine photo or something. Like and in other words, to, oh, go ahead. Oh, like in other words, um, like there's only a finite amount of say press photography or uh, stills from the film, and and people who are super fans are going to recognize if something is completely just m like mimicking that one shot. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, so yeah, in the case of uh, Mark, it for me trying to do that, it just for I had the biggest trouble uh trying to nail down his likeness uh in a way that was you know it looked like him but wasn't necessarily something that you had seen exactly before and and you know part of that too is that his look kind of changes between the films right a new hope luke looks different in certain ways than empire luke than right Jedi yeah luke so it's like okay which how do I combine all this? You know, which Luke am I are trying to represent here? And uh, does it look like him? Yeah, that's true because he sort of had the, in the very first films, which I always get confused. I know that it's technically not the, supposed to be the first film, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's, uh, he is, uh, he's like a, got more of a baby face. He's got like that youth kind of plumpness that people have when they're really, really young. Like it's still like almost like the remainder of like baby fat. And then as uh -huh. he, he kind of drops. So yeah, you'd have to take that into account because people are such, uh, rigorous fans of them that they're going to be like oh it's that era loop or it's this era loop yep yep absolutely um then so when did you get involved officially i mean you've been a recent addition to magic but you've 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 hit the ground running how did you get involved with wizards of the coast 
Uh, I, that was just, I, so um, ever since, you know, starting out in this career 10, a little over 10 years ago, uh, a lot of the artists in, in the fantasy and sci-fi genre that I follow and looked up to, uh, you know, I knew that they worked in magic and I, you know, I was aware of magic, of course, but never really played it um, growing up, even though I had friends that did. But, uh, you know, I just, it seemed like exactly the kind of work that I wanted to be doing in my career too. And so I had tried to kind of break in ever since I got out of art school which my portfolio back then, you know, certainly was not up to par with what they want and whatnot. But um, I finally, finally got in with them at, kind of as a result of knowing one of the um, art directors over there that uh, he had worked at Fantasy Flight Games for a few years while I was working with them. Um, Who was that? Uh, Taylor Ingvarsson. Okay. That's how you say his last name? I, Sorry, I, I believe so, but you know, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> excuse the American watchery. Or yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a lot of S's and some G's. And mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so, I was like so relieved. I was like, oh, I can say his name without making a fool of myself because when I interview a certain person, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I will ask them how to pronounce their name before we even start speaking because yeah. I'm that sure that i'm gonna butcher it but i digest (laughs) um so taylor got you into the mix that's how it worked out yeah yeah i reached out i said hey you know it's great to see you're you're working with magic and if uh if you you know it was great working with you when you were ffg if you ever want to work together again i'm i'd be super stoked to to be working on magic and stuff and uh it was Shortly after that, you know, maybe a couple new portfolio pieces after that that I, I finally got the the email from them saying, hey, do you want to want to do some magic? And I was like, yes, absolutely. What was your first card? Uh, the first one was uh, Archfiend's Vessel. That's that. That's I mean, that is an incredibly cool piece. I mean, I'm interested to know what the the notes on that said and what uh, like how you you uh, got inspired to do that because it's 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 really layered uh it's as far as what's going on in it there is an element of you know there's obviously there's the horror and then the, the there's an element of um religion but there's also like a, a, it, to me it appears that there's like an eroticism almost to it as well um what, <laughs> because you he yeah. looks like he could be either dying or uh, having one off if sure. you know so sure. <laughs> so what what was the uh, creation behind that what, what were the notes on that uh yeah so it was one of those briefs that um is actually super open-ended where i think it was really no more descriptive than uh is a black mana card so we i kind of knew you know generally like what color scheme and, and sort of what feeling it needed to have uh and then as far as the description went it was just like a a cleric uh, is wields a sacrificial knife, and there's like a smoke demon appearing behind him, and that was pretty much it. Um, there was no no real guidance on the environment, other than I think I think they did mention it needed to be like kind of a, a cathedral type uh, setting or something like that. But um, you know, there was no specific plane called out or anything like that. It was just really open ended, and I was like, "Okay, well, uh, here's my interpretation of that." And um, so, yeah, it, as far as the, you know, I, I think the eroticism maybe comes from a lot of like the dripping candle wax type yeah. stuff too, where which um, it could be violent or it could be, you know, like it could be either or. But then again, there is sort of that connection that goes on. Yeah, yeah, it I, that all kind of came organically in a sense where it was like I. I knew it was going to be kind of this this dark moody card that I wanted a lot of the the light to come from you know candles and everything it was like but you know let's take that to the extreme and, and let's add a, a billion candles into the scene um and then how does that maybe start to tell a story about who this person is and and like what uh what his belief system maybe calls for, you know? So I just vaguely in my mind was thinking like, okay, he's maybe some sort of a candle cult type dude. Yeah. Where he's got all of these candles kind of melted as, as almost decoration on his arms and everything. It's like part of the ceremony. And then this smoke demon 
uh, is just manifesting from all of like the candle smoke uh, pooling behind him and then and forming this uh, this creature. Um, so that was kind of how that came about. Uh, I wasn't wasn't thinking too much about uh, <laughs> like any sort of BDSM scenarios or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, oh no, that's all me. I'm totally I'm a degenerate. <laughs> but it's but you know. Once I, well, you know, once you release it to the world, it's no longer yours. Oh, well, it's out there. But um, so that was, you hit the ground running with that one. And then right away, you're, you know, banging out a, a planeswalker, you did fairy. And and um, then you are, show, I don't know where you chose, I mean, how did it happen as far as the, the, the Walking Dead? That's a pretty significant assignment to get. Um, how did that ha happen? Are you approached or are they how how did you go into the mix for that one um yeah they approached me and i think it just it kind of came back to like what we were talking about before and um the ability to uh render convincing likenesses uh they I'm saying. Know, uh probably a lot of the star wars work and, and licensed work that i had done in the past kind of sold me to that particular project where they they knew that i could it was something that i could do so they they reached out to me and i was like yeah this sounds awesome and um that was it must have been cool to be involved with i mean i, I whatever your the stance was as far as fans go it was a huge seller and i mean i bought one i have one right in the corner here actually i mean this is sort of dork moment but <laughs> i i literally have it right here. see <laughs> nice, nice yes yes thank you and it's only because I'm incredibly lazy that I had it out there. I was just like, but I wanted to keep it because it's special. But um, uh, so you you got to do that now. And, and this is regards to not just that, but any of your pieces. Have you ever had any um, sort of feedback from any of the uh, celebrities that you have uh, done? Uh, I've not personally received the feedback, but I know with The Walking Dead, um, that was a scenario where the actors had to approve the likenesses. So I know that they've seen it. Uh, but nobody has talked directly to me, but it was good oh. enough for them, I guess. So that, well, that makes yeah. me happy. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess so. I mean, I can't, yeah, now you mentioned it, like there is probably so much like hardcore, like protection of that property because it's like, it's the walking dead and then it's magic. So yeah, there's all that bureaucratic red tape, but all right, so that's cool. They had to get approval. Well, I mean, it, they look like, it, they look like it, the, the characters look like them. I mean, it's like, you, you recognize Negan when you yeah. see him and, um, He's a, it, that's a cool pose that you got for him. I mean, like, and was that, was that like, do you use the same sort of amalgamation of different shots for that? And um, it, is that what you did? Or I, cause I'm, I'm not, I kind of stopped. I'm kind of like with you where like after season four, I was kind of like, yeah, but, yeah. but um, you know, no hate to the Walking Dead fans out there. It's just sort of got a little long after that. Yeah. But, so I didn't get really to know Negan, but he does seem like the, an interesting character. So how do you choose the poses that they do? Because it really does capture who they are. Yeah. Um, I mean, so we were definitely uh, provided with a number of like marketing shots and things like that to reference. Um, I always go to the back to the shows and the movies and, and look at, um, you know, I'll go through and, and see if I can find any interesting shots or uh kind of like knowing like you said what um personality i want to convey in this particular piece um it's like sorry the dogs are going off. nice that's uh, the first time it's never happened it usually happens to me i, usually, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping maybe sorry my chihuahua that. barking got away i maybe got away with it i was talking when it happened but I, oh, like, I yeah. didn't even notice, didn't even notice. well now i just fuck, I, I just fucked myself over <laughs> And um, anyway i'm sorry no no problem uh i yeah so i'll i'll go back to the shows and things and um like i said knowing kind of the the feeling and the personality that i want to convey in the piece uh sort of just try to think back to like all right um is there a particular episode you know that i'm thinking of where that that really comes across and and just sort of see um you know is, for example I, as far as the negan piece is concerned um it seemed pretty clear i think from the brief that uh they were referencing the scene where he's more or less introduced and he's got all the survivors kind of on their knees and everything he's giving yeah. this long monologue with the, he's got lucille there and everything so uh you know i i referenced that scene a lot but um 
it is still kind of an amalgamation of those reference photos I was provided, uh, reference from the actual show, and then you know, any kind of little tweaks that I make myself. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's cool that the way you kind of like sort of subtly mixed in the whole Mardu colors, like and it's at least I can see it is that you know the kind of the, the red, white, and uh, the red, white, and black sort of yeah. feel to it. I, yeah, if you don't play Magic, you probably were like Mardu. Uh, you're like, is that, is that a pasta <laughs> sauce? <No. laughs> I've never heard heard that term, but I know what you're uh, talking about. Yeah, Mardu is uh, that's what if that's what we we, we super nerds refer to as uh, the the different like uh, color combinations. And so that's oh, okay. I I know that one because that's Edgar Markov, which is a vampire thing. Which you know I'm into vampires, but uh, sure. but um so the other thing that I found interesting is that while you do uh, a lot of like very um very uh like on point likenesses you do get some really cool assignments where it's sort of it's historical people but they allow you to be creative like for instance like with washington's crossing um that one i found interesting because that it doesn't look like the way i guess that way george washington's presented in like say the the paintings that you see or the dollar bills you know this that was that a, a conscious decision or how did that come about uh, I mean, yeah, some of that, I guess, is, is conscious where, um, I guess, just personal taste, I guess, in a sense, where I, I still try to make it look like him, but also I'm kind of, I feel like I'm kind of notorious for always doing upshots on figures where the camera is like kind of slightly low looking up. Uh-huh. Uh, because it's always the most heroic way to, to look at a figure generally. And right there that's kind of one view that we never see of washington you know or, or of historic figure you know they're always either dead on or like a straight portrait or a profile view or something like that um so i there is some difficulty in in trying to make it look like him when it's not a view that we're really familiar with either uh so in that case i had actually taken uh I had taken a trip recently to Detroit, um, and they had a uh, a bust, a Washington sculpture, um, just a portrait bust of him in there. And so I, I kind of took the opportunity to take some photos of that at the angles that I knew that I was kind of working on at the time anyway. So I, I used some of that too in there. Um, but yeah, it, it really just kind of came down to artistic license i mean it's it's you can i mean it's it's obvious that it's him it's just it was interesting the way that it was done and i i, I really enjoyed the the composition of it and of the harry tubman one also very very cool yeah. um like uh it, and um I, I you gotta be proud of um the uh the boy who fought hitler uh that's that's a cool piece because as you said it was sort of like it's a historical figure that's an actual hero, but then it's done like a Drew Struzan yeah. poster. And is that what the the brief called for? Just did they they mention that? Pretty much, yeah. They they wanted like you know the classic. Uh, I I can't remember if they specifically named like Drew Struzan, but I could tell just by the way they described it. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're thinking of Drew, and, and yeah, I can totally do that and, and, and uh, have fun with that. Yeah, he uh, he's uh, he's something else, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's fantastic. A huge inspiration for me growing up. I can I can imagine. Um, what would you say if you had to pick, like, if you could hypothetically own one Drew Struzan original, even if it's already purchased, which one would it be? Oh, man, that's tough. I I've got uh the Revenge of the Sith poster hanging up in my studio here, so maybe that I, one. <laughs> um, nice. But I, I always loved when he did the um, the Star Wars special edition posters, the way that they formed a triptych uh, side by side. That always that blew me away. You know, since I was a kid. So I actually never realized that that they did that as a triptych. I didn't have to go. And yeah, look. yeah. If if you go out and look at it, um, they all kind of fit together and create this this giant. Uh, star wars piece it's, it's just super cool the way he planned that out mine would be the mist because that's actually hanging in my bedroom uh the poster for the mist which yeah. i mean did you see them did you see it uh the movie or the poster but well both <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm trying to it's I 
the Lovecraftian you know, like I, sort of like thing where they all are in the grocery store and they're trapped and and uh, these things are coming out of the ether and attacking them. Um, it's cool because the character who is the lead character, he's a movie poster artist. At the beginning of the movie, he's actually drawing the poster for the thing. And uh, uh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're if you're a big fan of him, it's a it's a it was done. It's a really, it's really scary. I mean, it'll leave you like uh, drained. It's uh, got one of the most like gut punch endings of like recent history, but it's good. You, sh- you, you probably would enjoy it. I think, when did it come out? Cause I, I 2007. Like I, okay. Yeah. I think I did see it. It's just been a long time. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. And cool. um, uh, did you know, I just found this out today, actually, that, that he did not know uh, when he got the assignment to do the, the poster for the thing he had, he did it in one day. And he had no guidance whatsoever as to what the film was about, other than that it was a remake of the a thing from another world. He, that's it. And I know that. I mean, isn't that nuts? It's nuts. Yeah, it's, it is. To hear, first of all, how quickly some of these, uh, you know, very well known and, and classic illustrators worked, or you know, were able to work. I mean, the, the the idea that he did that in one day just like blows my mind wide open. But uh, um yeah they, i mean i love those stories where they're just well I didn't, I didn't know what was happening and i just busted this out and they liked it and now it's a movie poster is there a property that other than like you know i mean you're already attached to some big biggins but um is there a property that you would love to work on one day that you haven't yet uh that's a good question i i have to think about that i I mean, I, I kind of did get to a point that this, it feels weird to say because after a while working on Star Wars, um, and this was before I had started working on magic, but I, you know, was kind of having these thoughts where it's just it, in terms of the, the franchises that I love and everything like that, it kind of felt like a peaking moment where I'm like, all right, now, now what do I want to do? Because I, I see, yeah. Of course, I, I love working on Star Wars and everything like that, but as an artist, you know, I kind of reached this moment. I was like, all right, what do I do now? But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm Jurassic Park would be a lot of fun, I think. That would that would be cool. That would be great. Um, yeah, I, Alien. Alien. Ooh, that, that would be good, too. Oh, yeah, you should. Yeah, you could definitely, you could definitely nail that one. I mean, yeah. we can nail them all, but, you know, I mean, like, but, <laughs> but yeah, people need, I mean, we, they, you know, there's not enough of Ripley out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like if, um, and I'm sure that everybody who is involved at Fox and is watching this right now and, uh, they'll take my word for it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we want more, but, uh, so, um, one of the ones that I also loved was Narrow Escape. That is such a cool painting. Um, oh, yeah. thank you. How did that? How do you, again, I can't, I hate being redundant, but I, the way that your storytelling is in your pieces is very, um, it's very clear that you have a background in it because you're able to inject a whole lot into something that could easily be just a kind of a, just a basic action piece or, you know, something along those lines. Um, how do you get the models for that? Do you have the monster lined up from the company? Uh, uh, I mean, so that one in particular, as far as the models go, that piece was commissioned um, as kind of a uh, an anniversary, like a congratulatory anniversary piece for a couple of the employees there at Fantasy Flight. So it was like, um, I don't know if they still do this, but uh, at the time they, as a like kind of a five year work anniversary, uh, employees would kind of, you know, get their likeness on kind of like their own cards or their own sort of piece of artwork in, in the games they were producing. And so uh, those particular guys, uh, it was their anniversary and they came, uh, Fantasy Flight came to me and said, this is what we're doing. And this is, they gave me the brief on, you know, what they wanted them to be doing. You know, it was, it was they should be on like a motorcycle with a sidecar, drive, trying to escape uh, a Cthulhu type monster. Um, and you know, they've got like a bunch of scrolls or something like that, that, uh, that they're trying to get away with. So that, that was pretty much it, but yeah, like, so in that case, my models were provided for me. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun because they would do their own little like model shoots there in the office. And so I could, I'd see them like in their cubicles <laughs> doing you know, like these poses and things that I had asked them to do, you know, and, and sort of roughly sketched out for them. 
uh, to try to match and everything like that. And so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to take that and then kind of insert that into this, this big action set piece with a, a interdimensional monster behind them and everything like that. Yeah, it's it's insane to look at because I I, I look at it and you're like, you're first you're immediately drawn to the characters and then you you it actually takes you a while to kind of like well, at least for me to circle around and see the the like what's actually happening that there's a it's mid gunshot I mean it's insane it's it's uh it's, it really feels like it's moving <laughs> yeah. um, as it happens and it's just it's fan, it's fantastic and you don't see a lot of humor in um a lot of the Lovecraftian stuff because it's usually very you know. Uh, sure. yeah. yeah. So it's nice to see that there's a little lightness in it. I mean, it's blasting the, the thing and it's, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, tenured ink, I'm sorry, uh, tenured um, ink caster. Now you said that Ed, you, you had said that that was a, a tricky experience because of the pandemic. I'd love to know that story. Um, yeah, the, I, so during the time the commission and the pandemic had just sort of taken hold and uh, everybody was, I mean, I want to say that was when, within the first couple weeks of everybody kind of being relegated to their homes. And, um, you know, whereas I might normally hire a model to come in to, to my house and, and do a photo shoot there for a piece, uh, I had to kind of figure out what, what to do at that point so that I could get kind of a convincing human figure. And, and uh turn the assignment in as needed but uh it really worked out because i had a couple friends in town that um one of them is a photographer and the other one uh models uh, often for him and she does a lot of like costume modeling and things and prior to this assignment when they uh knew that i was working on magic they of course said hey you know we we love magic and, and we played uh for a number of years and if, if you ever need help with modeling or, or photography or anything like that for any of your pieces, hit us up. And, and I asked him like, well, okay, is there any, you know, as far as modeling goes, uh, is there any particular uh, color or anything or, or type of uh, character or something that you'd be really keen on doing? Like, oh, well, you know, we, we tend to go dark a bit, you know, vampires and stuff, but we're open. Oh. So, I was like, hey, this is perfect she had the perfect look for it and she's a great model. And um, so it was an opportunity for me to kind of remote art direct a photo shoot where uh, we're just doing it basically, I think over Zoom, uh, like wow. we're talking now where he could show, the, the photographer could show me uh, exactly what he was seeing through his camera and then when he would take the shots and everything. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great and it was, much easier than I thought it was going to be. And it worked out great. And um, yeah, it was... I would, if there's any chance that I could see a screenshot of that, like, I mean, I imagine you have that saved. It would be super cool to see that, that uh, the way that that came out, because it's, it's so, yeah. um, it's so uh, it, now that that actually makes sense. Now that you, with the way the paintings are laid out, it almost seems like it was almost inspired by the zoom and the squaring and the, it, but then that also makes sense because they're artists and it's uh it's cool that's cool uh you got if there's any way we could see that i would i would i would give my left nipple for that <laughs> but I not my right i i definitely have uh a lot of those reference photos laying around i could probably send you i don't know if i have any actually screenshots of like the workflow but um i'll see what I, i'll see if i can dig that out that's i mean wow so you that so it, it it happened live is what you're telling me yeah yeah i was you know he would take a shot and i would see it on my screen and i'm like okay that's great you know i really like the expression there can we move the hand you know a little bit more like this or uh, or you know maybe get a little more attitude into the pose or um you know just kind of play around with direction like that and or you know can we adjust the lighting a little bit so that uh it's it's one way versus the other um it's just it was super easy to experiment with and um yeah I, I was super thankful that that worked out the way it did because i you know it makes the piece all the better for for being able to to use live models or, or you know living people <laughs> as right models. 
Right, right. Um, it's and it's uh, it's it's got a sort of um, like a Pasolini or Fellini, sort of like an Italian uh, filmmaker feel to it. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but it really kind of looks like the way that those um, 1960s Italian master films looked like. I don't know uh, if you're familiar with them or if you. I mean, uh, I'm a cinephile nerd, so it's my my thing. But um, it it has a very like very 1960s 1970s kind of feel to it of the italian filmmakers which is pretty cool yeah thanks i i can't say that that was anything specific that i referenced um when i was coming up with it but uh it's i'm it's always fascinating to me um hearing different people and and how they i the, the different things that people see in in the same kind of work you know i uh and things that I didn't necessarily think about when I was working on it, but it, it just the different ways that it speaks to people. Um, yeah, I mean, it, as far as the mood of that one goes, it really just came about. The mood for me always with magic is usually determined by the, you know, what mana color is it? Uh, and then I guess what the scene is. And in this particular case, being a vampire, you know, it needed to be kind of moody and, and atmospheric, but not necessarily like super threatening since she's a, a professor, you know, she's teaching students and whatnot. So it was kind of, um, you know, maybe a little noir inspired with the, the dappling of the light and everything. But again, that goes back to some practical concerns too, right? She's a vampire. You don't want to have her in direct sunlight or anything like that because that's generally bad. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Not good so, for the skin of them. Nope. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't tan. Yeah. They need that, that SPF 2000 or something, right? Right. Yeah, like the ones they put on in Blade, where it's like, <laughs> that's yeah. not a real yeah, right? thing. <laughs> you can't go watch the sunrise. They don't make that, <laughs> they don't make that kind of stuff yet. But uh, yeah, no, um, it's it's really cool. It's uh it's it's a great, it's a great piece. I mean, and and so um the the question is. Are you involved with, I know you, there's certain things you cannot discuss as far as specifics, but are you working on anything right now for Magic that is going to be released in the future? Uh, yeah, I, well, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm usually working on something with Magic at any given point. Um, so I, I can say right now that I'm working on some warhammer stuff that that was announced that they're doing the warhammer crossovers the, the 40k crossover stuff they oh that's oh god yeah really okay cool oh wow um, that's intense so yeah that's uh that's what i'm working on right now um, <laughs> but i'll, have, I'll have some things coming out in, in other uh other uh, magic specific sets uh, yeah, i think i have some stuff coming out with um modern horizons 2 and uh the dungeons and dragons the forgotten realms stuff i think i've got a piece in there that's that's great uh you know i really i do anticipate that you're like uh you know you're going to be uh one of the the staples in like say 20 years where that are like that people see like a Donato Giacola and and that will be you in like 20 years because your stuff's like it's legit good i mean Thanks. it's Thank it's, you. it's i you know i would be ecstatic if that's the case but uh, i i'll i'd be ecstatic just to still be working on this stuff that far in the future and everything i mean it's it's great fun and it's it's definitely been a career highlight for me um, over the past couple of years now, I guess, that I've been working with them. It's, it's just tons of fun. And um, before I let you go, is there anything that you are working on that is that we haven't talked about that you would like to bring attention to? Uh, let's see. I, I also do uh, work for the Who Was series of young reader books. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are great. Um, I think the most recent one that I, that I wrapped up. Uh, actually, I don't know if I can announce that one. I don't know oh, announced it. But the most recent published one that I have was uh, what was like the Age of Exploration, which was uh, a fun one to work on. And um, yeah, they're, they're just great little books for for really anyone to kind of brush up on all kinds of different biographies and and history and things like that. It, 
Yeah, it's, I, it, it's um, is it, where where is it published again? Is it the New York Times? Is that just or, or? Uh, it's Penguin Publishing. Okay, Penguin Publishing. Okay, that's it's and you just and that's like the one where you did like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, yeah, yep. That's yeah, like big fan of hers. Yeah, yeah. So it's been that's been a ton of fun to work on those kinds of things and uh, simultaneously learn a lot about a lot of different <laughs> subjects as I'm doing it. So yeah. Who is the, who is somebody that you learned about that you were like most blown out by? Oh man, um, I think about this now. I really liked uh, Booker T. Washington. Um, Andrew Jackson was fun, even though you know he's maybe <laughs> not maybe not like a great role model in terms of personality, but. Uh, that was an interesting one. Um, he he sort of had like a Bond villain kind of thing going, didn't he? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like he, he he was like a villain, but he was a fascinating villain. Like, yeah, did, yeah. <laughs> he, I mean, yeah. I just I don't know that we would be friends. No, no. Fascinating I, I, history there. Yes, very interesting. Not sure if you want to have him over for dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I do appreciate the way that. Um, you know the the writing of a lot of these books you know even even for some maybe controversial characters uh they are are clear about sort of the controversy with them and everything too so it's not necessarily just like look how great uh Andy right. jackson was and, and look right. at all the great things he did um you know this this uh age of exploration book that i did it, it covers a lot of the history of, of things and the accomplishments, but also delves into the, you know, was this cool for these European guys to just go running around everywhere and, and start claiming land and, and enslaving people and, things and in like provoking that. treaties and right. all that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so, you know, it, it's good to see that kind of coverage um, of those topics for young readers and everything to kind of, round round things out i agree i will tell you that this i was this weekend i was i i got just done a side gig doing photography f assistance for a it ended up being um a uh very uh right wing uh sort of gathering uh -huh. and crossin is the congress the very youngest congressman uh that has ever been he's north carolina and he is the one who went to hitler's <laughs> winter home and, and instagrammed oh, about it and he got up on stage <laughs> and he told everybody the audience that what he really wanted to do was to focus on not like we need to stop remembering the atrocities that happened in the world but rather just remember the good things and i was thinking to myself yeah he probably wouldn't like that andrew jackson thing because it's like you know why, yeah. why look at the bad stuff i was like well this yeah. coming from somebody who you know goes to hitler's winter home for funsies uh, yeah right you know you can yeah, yeah. As a, as, 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 I think I was probably the only Jewish person in the audience because I was the only one whose eyes were like, like saucers. So I was oh like, this, it's like this is being said. This yeah. is being said. Oh my god. Yeah, be, maybe I'll send him a copy of one of those books. And just be like, read harder. There you go. Yeah, you know that's about all you can do, I think, in that case. Yeah, try to encourage them to read. Yeah. It. I was, uh, I was like, don't run away screaming just yet. Everyone's yeah. going to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It was awesome talking to you. Hey, I appreciate you having me. This was a ton of fun and happy to chat anytime. All right. Well, uh, good, I'd, I'd say good luck to you, but you don't need it. <laughs> I'll always say that. Yeah, good luck is never. I'll, I'll never turn my nose off at it. So. Okay. Well, you have a good one. Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. First off, how awesome is Jake's art? And he's got a 40 watt smile going for him too. Also, Star Wars, great movie. Okay, I was a little disappointed to find out that it's science fiction instead of reality TV, but it certainly has stars in it. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Simba's dad from The Lion King to name a few. And talk about being ahead of its time. You name one other movie from that era that has featured an openly gay robot couple. All I can say is I hope they make a sequel. This thing has staying power. Well, until next time, I got a scoop.